Our scripture reading this morning is Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 7. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia, and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory I have formed him, yea, I have made him. With uh, so much taking place in our nation and uh, many things disturbing taking place, and uh, we need to trust in the providence of God. And I've mentioned this uh, several times along the way. Uh, over the last few months, but we we see this in a mighty way. There's a uh, plan afoot, and it's called uh, the Great Reset. And the plan is to reset everything and to make world government. And uh, I had just uh, mentioned this morning that we heard that there's a board of civilians that have has an office in the in the pentagon the people aren't on that office anymore they got fired by the man who says you're fired and uh and they included henry kissinger and madeline albright i don't know who the others are i think there's like six or seven members of this board but anyway, um, in, in my opinion, that's the good news. That fact of what happened in California when they were shutting everything down, and now they say, except for churches. I mean, how many weeks ago was it that this was going on You know, with uh, Pastor MacArthur's church there in, uh, in California? You know, and, and they weren't going to be allowed to meet and so on and so forth. And, and uh, there were some people that had come down with uh, whatever they call it, COVID. But anyway, and, uh, but all those people are well. And no one is getting sick. And, and they're not limiting the size of people that come in. I know that like in, in uh, Tacoma, uh, there in the state of Washington, they can't have more than 25% of the capacity of their seating space. And so they they make it all right going to Coma. It's, it's close. But anyway, uh, they're, they're able to do that. They have all these rules, social distancing, this, that, and the other. But anyway, there's such an antagonism that's been uh, demonstrated throughout all this, an antagonism uh, toward the uh, Christian church uh, certainly, uh, this was demonstrated by our own governor when they had the initial uh, clo- you know, s- shutdown and, and so on. And, uh, when, and it was demonstrated in California, and it's been demonstrated in Washington. And there in Washington, you know, the, the churches couldn't meet, but of course the people in Washington were able to still go out to their pot store and get, and it's not flower pots either, and get whatever they wanted, but just don't don't push it, don't go to church. 
and and that's it was against the rules. And this is manifested all over the country in in uh, so many locations. But we see this passage here today of our that speaks of our sovereign Lord, and He comforts His church. We know that it speaks here. It says, O Jacob and he that formed thee, O Israel. But I would remind you of the passage in, in Galatians 3.29. Galatians 3.29. And there we read. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So this promise that's in Isaiah it speaks of uh, here, speaks of Jacob and Israel. It's a promise to his people who have been saved by grace. And if you are of the seed of Christ, then are you the seed of Abraham. And so those who have been saved by the grace of God are walking in that promise. And God comforts his people and he encourages them in, in this walk. And I hope that we are encouraged by the promises that we have in God's holy and fallible word. This chapter has a close connection with the chapter previously uh, written that we have here in the book of Isaiah. But it's uh, certainly a surprising one. It was said there that Jacob and Israel would not walk in God's ways. And that when he corrected them for their disobedience, they were stubborn, laid it not to heart. Now one would think, after having done that, one would think that uh, among them, that they were incorrigible. Yet God continued his love and care for his people. Sometimes they were sent into, uh, you know, into being held captive for years. But God continued his love for them, his care for his people, and the body of that nation should still be reserved for mercy, that he was going to manifest that to him. And we pray that that would be the case for our country. God's goodness, as one man wrote, excuse me, through many among, though many among them were Incorrigible, yet God would continue his love and care for his people and the body of that nation should still be reserved for mercy. God's goodness, as one man further said, God's goodness takes occasion for man's badness to appear so much the more illustrious. We're told in scripture, and you're familiar with this passage in Romans 5, 20, for sin abounded grace did much more abound. What a blessed promise that is. And what a blessed hope that is for those who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. The expressions that we have here of God's uh, love and favor towards his people are certainly very high. They speak of his desire to comfort his people and our being of the seed of Christ. We're the seed of Abraham to and we are comforted by those promises that he makes to his people. It's like the same responsibility that's in Second Chronicles 7, 14, where it says, if my people, you know, and these are things to, to do, and my people includes Christians. It includes Christians there, those who have received mercy from our Heavenly Father. And there's mercy, certainly rejoices, against judgment now the sun breaking out as one man wrote now the sun breaking out thus of a sudden from behind a thick and dark cloud shines a brighter and with a pleasing surprise the expression of God's loving favor towards his people is certainly manifest here it speaks of an abundance of comfort to all the spiritual seed of Jacob and all the spiritual seed of Israel. For to us is this gospel preached, as well as to those that were captives in Babylon. 
that gospel, that mercy that he showed in the people being released from Babylon is the grace and the mercy that has been spoken to us and released us from our sin and released us from being uh, without any hope but to be comforted by the promises of God. There are many places to look at here that speaks to this, but when it says, and we'll look at several of these passages, there in verse 1, Fear not, why? For I have redeemed thee. And, and I think most of you know that the word redeem means the price has been paid. There is a cost. And that was the precious blood of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, shed on our behalf according to the will of His Heavenly Father. And uh, it was shed for us, and we've been redeemed. I'm, I think I mentioned this uh, before. That there was a, a, a soldier one time who was having a lot of, a lot of difficulties. And uh, he had fallen asleep at a desk where he was working. And he had been writing down about his indebtedness. He had all the lists there. And his commanding officer had come by and saw him that way and look to see what was on there. And he said, he wrote on the top of that note while that guy was still sleeping, paid in full. Paid in full. You and I can't look at that. It's written in God's Word. We've been redeemed. The debt's paid in full. I, I grieve for people who think they still have to, they still owe something. And there are those who, who think that. And uh, they're caught up in, in, a, uh, in a works religion that they have to earn it. They're caught up, you know, whether it's the, uh, the false teaching about the doctrine of purgatory. But that debt has been paid on in full. God didn't need our help. And we didn't do anything, you know, to help our salvation. He didn't need that little nudge from us, you know, to make sure... It went all the way. He didn't take that. But he, but he tells them, and uh, to fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Those, those words ought to be a delight to us. To, and there's other places that speak about this. That he calls us uh, by our name. And, uh, and that, that's almost overwhelming to try to grasp that. That he's done that for us. And what an encouragement that ought to be to us who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when it talks about redeem, we see in 1 Peter 1.18. 1 Peter 1.18. For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Also in Isaiah 49, verse 4. Isaiah 49, verse 4. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with God. And then in Isaiah 63, Isaiah 63 and verse 9. And there we read, In all their affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them, in his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. What a comfort that is. And as they had been in, in captivity, the people being captive, you and I were captives of Satan. We were servants of his, you know, apart from the grace of God. And we've been redeemed. The price has been paid, and it's paid in full. We see in Psalm 106, Psalm 106, 
and verse 10. And he saved them from the hand of him that hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. And we recognize our primary enemy, of course, was the devil. And we've been delivered from that. But in our looking about us and things that are in our future, however God has ordained that, whatever would be in his providence, we can always be comforted that, that he's redeemed us. We can always be comforted, comforted that he called us by our name. We can always be comforted that he has given us eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And then in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9. And there we read. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, kindred and tongue and people and nation. Once again, that promise of redemption. We praise him for it. We also see that he's our God as expressed in the covenant that he's made with those who are his own. And it's promises of the Abrahamic covenant or promises that we can rejoice in, the promises of the Davidic covenant or promises that we can rejoice in, the covenant promises of the Noahic covenant are those things that we can rejoice and praise him for. And what we have here, he tells us, fear not, right there in the middle of verse 1. He says, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob that formed thee. And we think of that in the promises of God's word concerning that created. And when it says created, that comes from the Hebrew word made out of nothing made out of nothing. It's the same word that about when creation took place. What was creation? All those things he brought in, he spoke them into existence. He didn't have anything existing, some element or whatever, you know, that he had to, to work with. He had everything that was needed within himself and he formed us, he made us one of his own. We praise him for him. And it says there in verse 2, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. What a promise. What a blessing that is. And uh, he also tells us there that... Uh, for I am, in verse 3, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, my Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. We think particularly the people had been in bondage there in, in Egypt. And, and they were set free from that. And, uh, and it's interesting to see part of the promises that are here. When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And... What's one of the things there that took place, you know, when the people were set free from bondage to Egypt and they left, they crossed over on dry land. And the, there was a wall on, on both sides of them. And as they crossed and they were being pursued by the enemy, the waters returned and Noah and his people, um, the, uh, Pharaoh and his people were destroyed. They were destroyed completely. And we rejoice in this. But it talks about here that since thou hast been precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable. And believers are precious in God's sight. And we can be thankful for that. Not anything of our own. Uh, 
it, they're his own uh, particular treasure. He loves them. He delights in them, and he and their name is great. We also know that, that even in that work in fleeing from Egypt, it was directed by the providence of God, and they were comforted in that. And you can be assured that in God's providence, He watches over you and me for whatever's happening in this country, however it may end, end up in this country, but we are promised that He would, uh, He told us to not fear, for I have redeemed thee, and have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Other instances there uh, where God would take care of them and it shows His. Uh, love and kindness for his people as we read there in verse 2 when thou passest through the waters and the rivers through the fire and the flame I will be with thee and I've mentioned this before but uh, but the lady that had gone through I think it was cancer very very bad down in Florida and uh, and she wrote a book I think the title was uh, when thou Walk us through, walking through the fire, something like that, and the things she'd gone through, and she was a believer, and she felt the hand of God upon her, you know, to help see her through that particular time, and it was a comfort to her, and she rejoiced in it. We think that the uh, in their journey that the Israelites passed through deep water; they certainly did. But it was on either side. The river shall not overflow thee. Should they by their persecutors be cast into a fiery furnace? What happened with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Yeah. And they were thrown into a fiery furnace. The fire didn't consume them. And they saw one walking there. And that certainly being the figure that brought comfort to the people. Should they, by their persecutors, or yet when the flame didn't kindle upon them, and it was fulfilled to the letter, what's stated here in God's promise to his people, and we can be sure of that. We see in Daniel chapter 3, Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, I'll begin reading verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, the and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried out, to you it is commanded, O people, all nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came here and accused the Jews, and spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the, of the cornet, flute, 
harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods and nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sat, <coughs> Sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? That God that would deliver them. It's the God that made the promise. Jacob and Israel who makes the promise to you and me that he's promises to watch over us and it goes on but if not he is known unto thee unto thee O king that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up there are those today who would like to have that worship that Nebuchadnezzar wanted for this pagan god that was set up. And then it says in verse 19, Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their, their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because of the king's commandment was urgent and the fire furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The ones that had to put them in there. You know, like the soldiers. The, you know, the ones that Nebuchadnezzar ruled over directly are the ones who died in, in the midst of the fire. And uh, then we go on. Then these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. In Nebuchadnezzar, came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their coats Changed, the sands rather, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own God. 
Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language would speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sword. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. God's promise, and as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God's promise to you and to me, the part of what we have here, when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Praise God. Praise God. That he he's comforts us. We're his people. The sheep of his pasture. He's called you by your name. He's redeemed you. The price has been paid. There's no other price to be paid. And we rejoice in that. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we're thankful for the promises of your word. We're thankful for this story that demonstrates this power in the lives of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And may we be faithful unto thee, rejoice in the promises of your word, and as sometimes things may appear bleak, may we be strengthened, knowing that you are able to deliver us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.